Hi guys, School here. Welcome to another episode of Derail Valley Overhauled. Hope you're enjoying them so far. You certainly seem to be, judging by the comments. I've noticed some some of the comments which I'm going to address today. Just to remind you where we are, um, there's a couple of locos over there. If I have a look at the fees, uh, we have racked up fees on two locomotives. Now, we could clear this down by paying just the copay insurance there, 3100 However, I think we can probably do another run in a locomotive because I'm not yet ready to buy the next license. Now, some people will play this differently to me. They will absolutely clear these fees down because they'll think about the next license, which is either going to be something like uh, Concurrent Jobs 1 for 10 grand. That allows you to do more than one job at the same time, which is useful. Uh, or they'll go for something like Logistic Hall and start doing logistic jobs. Both equally valid things to do. I'm going to show you a slightly different route that I'm going to take because what I want to do is I want to get a couple of gadgets. I'm not going to buy any more licenses, but we are going to rack up another bill on a locomotive. Now, I've looked at some jobs here, and some people have said in the comments, oh, well, you know, at this point, I would take concurrent jobs, and uh, I would I would haul, you know, two jobs at once. Perfectly, perfectly fine thing to do. If you're a fairly new player, wouldn't do that. Trying to deal with two jobs into stations that you've not yet learned is much trickier exercise. Better to focus on one, get it right, get your bonus, and keep your fees down in the early game. Much, much more important. The way the game is kind of geared is that as you pick up your licenses, things get more difficult and your fees are higher, but by then you're starting to earn big bucks. Uh, but I want to take you through that in a sort of progressive phase rather than trying to shortcut anything. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be able to take this logistic haul. So that leaves us with these. If we had the concurrent license and we thought we could haul that kind of weight, we could take either of those two. I'm not going to do that either. I want to do this one. City Southwest. So if you look where we are in, uh, in, in Harbour Town here, City Southwest is just there. It's just west of the steel mill that, where we started. Remember in episode one, we start here. And we went down to Harbour Town. We've done some shunting work. What I want to do now is basically haul something out of here through the steel mill and west through the farm oil well down to southwest. So what I'll do is I'll pick that up, hold the tab key down, just move your mouse. That'll put it into position four so I know it's there. I'm just going to keep hold of that for now. We'll have to find the shipment in a second. But I want to purchase some items. Now, every, not every town has a shop in it. The way you can tell is it has an icon at the bottom. It says shop. It's got a blue icon. So if it has a blue icon, like the Harbour Town does and like Machine Factory does, it has a shop. But certain items are only sold in certain places. And that list is available on the wiki or on the Steam page. That the stopwatch is available here, where we are now in the Harbour Town. And the other item I want is up at the Machine Factory, and that's the remote control. The best way to get there is to teleport. So let's go and get the pocket watch first. And the way we can tell where the shop is, is if you bring up the map of that town. In this case, the Harbour Town, you look for the blue dollar icon, and the shop itself is a building that's coloured blue. It's between E and F. So, knowing where E is, which is here, and knowing where F is, which is here, we know that the shop is probably down this road somewhere. And some of them can be a bit tricky to find, but this one's not too bad. It's just here. There you go. There's E. There's F over there. And the shop is here. It's always coloured like this. If you go inside, you'll find on this table the main special item that they sell, which for the Harbour Town is a stopwatch. The prices are on the back wall there. Uh, if you want a lighter and a shovel to operate a steam train, you need those. They're quite cheap. Pocket watch, five grand. Only need to buy it once. Comes with a lifetime guarantee. Pick up the little thing. Click on it to buy the pocket watch. And you'll see it says 5,000, so get your wallets. Wherever my wallet's gone, I can never find it, of course. Uh, there's my wallet. Really hard to open. Purchased. That gives you your receipt. Again, lifetime guarantee. If you ever drop an item, it will appear back at your um, your little hut, if you can't find it, in a little locker. Where's your hut, are you ask? There. There's your hut. That's your home starting point. There's the steel mill. There's your little home. It'll appear back in there like a lost and found section. So, where did that put it in our... There, you are, position nine. Right, the stopwatch, how does it work? Two ways of working. Either you left-click on the mouse to get it going, and it'll count upwards. You see the little second hand? Counts. Press it again to stop. 
mouse wheel will move the big hand. When you bring it back to, to 12 with the mouse wheel down, that's mouse wheel up, that's mouse wheel down, that will reset it. The other way of working it is to set it to a specific time, like let's say 10 minutes, and then click, and it will count down. And when it reaches zero, you'll hear it go off. Now, this is incredibly useful to time yourself on jobs because what you can do is you can say, well, let's take our job here. That's a 55-minute job. So we can bring up our pocket watch, mouse wheel up all the way around to 55 minutes. As soon as we hand the job in, activate this, take the job, and any time we want to know how long we've got left, we just look at our watch. Really, really useful item. And although it costs five grand, well worth picking up. Just remember you have to stop it before you reset it. Let's go and get the other item. So we're gonna left click on, so by the way, if you're holding this, by the way, obviously when you look around, the lighting is affected. So sometimes you have to spin around to get the light. Hold down the Alt key. The Alt key will let you look around independently. Obviously you're on VR, you don't need to do this. Uh, route mouse button will zoom you in and then left click on the item. And it'll say fast travel for two thousand dollars, or if you're in a locomotive, it's two grand. It's a lot of money. It's going to cost us four grand to get there and back. Again, if it was just me playing, I'd probably wait till I got up there. But I kind of want to show you this. So I'm going to teleport over to the machine factory. We'll bring up the map. We'll find where the shop is, and I'll go and show you the remote control. So if we go scroll forward, to machine factory. And we can note the machine factory, uh, if we find the actual station of trains, the turntable, it's between 1P and D. And D was the blue line, which means it's the passenger station. Uh, they're usually fairly easy to spot. The problem is these things don't really show you where you are on the map or any orientation. I think Deer Valley Simulator coming has a uh, compass we can use. That will be very handy indeed. Otherwise, you've got to try and orient yourself. There's the military base. Um, there's the station, so I think this is roughly west. There's the turntable. So turntable here, that means the shop is going to be just down from here, uh, somewhere over here. There's the passenger station there, I think. There's the shop. See, so not easy to find, but once you know where it is, not that hard. So there's the... This is how different this is. So this is the passenger terminal. There's the shop. And the turntable is all the way back there. But on the map, it doesn't quite look like that, does it? You see? You just have to run around sometimes and find it. Anyway, this is the bad boy we want, the remote control. Such a useful item. I thoroughly recommend that you get this fairly early in the game. It will reap dividends for you. 25,000, it's not cheap. But trust me when I say it's totally worth it. Where's my wallet gone? It's funny how I can never find it. 25 grand, it even comes with its own little handbook. It tells you how to do it. Don't worry about any of that. I'm just gonna show you how it works. Just be aware of what it says in here. A, first of all, it's battery powered. That's important because you do have to hold it in the sun to charge it up. That'll be more important when we come to simulator when there's night time. Next thing is it has a range. Operative up to about 400 meters, starts to lose signal, complete loss at 650. Range can be extended by 2,000 meters with the use of a signal booster. More about that in a future video. Let's pick this thing up. This is something you're going to want to have on your hotkey. It's up to you where you put it. Um, normally, I would... When I get the remote control, I will drop it into position two. So I'll have my switching, my remote control, always the controls are on one and two, and then three and four are reserved for the map. Normally I put map on three. So maps on three, station on four. One, two, three, four. That's how I do it. Up to you how you do it. So let's bring the, uh, the map back and we'll jump back down to the harbor town. And we'll basically pick up that job, but I'm going to show you now how to use the remote to get everything done. Here I am back at the harbour. Unfortunately, when we teleported away, it, despite the fact we had the job card in, the, in our hand, it actually expired that particular job. 
Fortunately, though, when I got back, I found a very similar one. So it goes to City Southwest. It's a little bit more weight, but it's also a bit more money. This will be a challenge to try and get out of the um, of the harbour. 320 tons for one shunter is an awful, an awful lot. It's rated for 400. It will probably overheat, but I think it'll be good fun trying. Now, I've looked up where it is. I'm just trying to flick these things. Or what I can do is if I just flick that for now, I can bring out the remote. And the way this works is if you hold the Alt key and look around, turn it on. Initially, it's not paired with anything. So get inside the loco that you want it to be paired with and then click on pair loco. That is now paired with this loco and you can actually get out of the train and it will tell you what speed it's doing and all the hot keys for your controls work or you can of course just look around and operate the controls but you can see accelerate it so remove the brake accelerate it that way whilst it's doing its thing you can then jump down here figure out you know what switches you want to set keep your eye on the train see what speed it's doing think you know I'll accelerate a bit more or accelerate a bit less up to like 400 meters, this thing will be remote controlled. And that frees you to basically run around and do this kind of thing. I think I want that one though. So this, <laughs> I believe FH28 is the job we want, FH28. But it's also got some more uses, which I'll show you now. So this thing comes in, we'll just accelerate it. Anything under 30 should be fine. This is the third loco. So we're now building up a, a bill, a fee on the third loco. This thing is very, very useful for not just remoting the train, so you can monitor the train, see what speed it's going, etc., and control it accordingly, but also it's great for coupling and uncoupling the entire train itself, and I'll show you that now. You don't have to connect to all the brake hoses anymore. It will do it for you. You can disconnect which ones you like, and you can do it all remotely while just monitoring what's going on. So there you go. We'll just take the brakes off. Let it cruise in. As soon as it pushes, click on the couple, done. Put the reverser into forward. Now, you've, it doesn't show you the brake pipe pressure. So, you know, I know from experience that the brake pipe pressure is going to be building up on this thing right now. So just give it 30 seconds before you start pulling away. But that is so much easier to couple and uncouple than getting underneath and faffing around. It also allows me now to start this thing in motion so I can get it going like this. And obviously there's a lot of weight here. And whilst it's doing that, I can then run off and um, go and hand the job in. In fact, if you're being really optimal about this, you could stand here and wait for the thing to sort of drive past there. When it's about there, run inside, hand the job in, run over, j jump on the train. I mean, you can do that without the remote, but the remote just lets you monitor things because, you know, when you're, when you're out of sight, when you go to some places and, um, you know, you lose track of, of where exactly the loco is, you can't see it, uh, but you can monitor its speed because sometimes it'll go up or down a gradient and you're not aware of it and you've left it on a certain throttle setting, but you don't really know what speed it's doing. Well, with this you do. You can, you can monitor it. It's doing uh, 22 kilometers per hour, which is great. You can also, it'll detect wheel spin for you. It'll start beeping and the light will flash and then you can deploy the sand, etc. Um, it's all the controls you would expect, just not as many of the sensors that you normally get inside the cab. Anyway, that's on its way through. So I'm just going to quickly uh, run over here. We'll bring up our job. Before we do that, we've got 55 minutes on the job, so we'll spin our mouse wheel around. 55 minutes. Go. And then we'll hand the job in. Okay, so just double check that we picked the right cars. D30 was correct. We're going to City Southwest, and we're going to be going to C2I. So we'll figure that, get on board and figure that out. Right, first thing is, is that set correctly? Yes, it is. Right, now, the harbour, as you may remember, when you come out, um, when you come out the harbour here, this is the critical part. This is the big steep climb. You want to have your engine nice and cool. You want to be going around that corner about 30 with the engine idling. Cool it as much as possible because it's going to be working very hard all the way up to that turn there. Then you have to cool it a little bit and make this climb up here. 
So there's a bit of an art to it, and this is a heck of a wait for this little shunter, but we'll see what we can do. We'll just back off on the throttle. All the, uh, the points are set correctly. They pretty much never, like that one only changes if you ever go in there, which is the military stuff, which you're not going to do to the end game. By that point, you'll know this thing anyway. So what we want to do is start looking at city, let's bring that up, city southwest, just to get an idea of what it is. We're going to be coming in from the east, which is the bottom here. Uh, so what we want to be doing to get into C is we either drive forward in, which is bad because that's a terminus, or what we actually want to do is go right and then reverse in. That's the way we do it. So the engine's nice and cool. You're going to have to give it some beef. You want to be doing 30 by the time you've just about exiting this turn here. So we want to start building up the speed, stop the wheel spin. There we go. There's our 30. Just hold it there. And now we're clear of that sharp turn. Get your sand down. And try and get as much momentum as you can without wheel slipping. It's all about momentum at this point. If you don't have it, you're not going to clear this hill. It's as simple as that. Notice the speed limit of 40. Do not back off. This slope will shave the speed off for us, no doubt. If it doesn't, we can always back off just before the turn. You've really got to gauge this as you're going along. You don't want to go more than 40 through this turn, though, so I'm just going to back off slightly. You can hear the wheels, you know, they're complaining a little bit about that. Don't forget the back of the train's still going through. Let's try and keep our speed at 40 if we can. Get the throttle back on. Notice the engine temperature. It's a real hard bit up here, especially when you've got a heavy load. And the DE2 really does overheat. It's chronic for it. Okay, that's the initial struggle done. Just going to keep the pressure on for now just to get us through the rest of that hill remember the back half of the trains hanging over that slope now the speeds building we can back off now right you want to shut down at this point not shut down but you know what i mean back off completely let it just coast a little bit now let it just get some of that temperature back down we won't lose too much speed Take advantage of this flat bit because after that turn, that's a climb as well. That's quite a long climb up there. But yeah, you've, you've got to get that temperature down. There's a real art to getting out the harbour, uh, but it is a lot of fun. A lot of the jobs, well, some of the complaints you hear about the game are most jobs lead to the harbour. And, you know, there's a certain amount of truth in that. Um, but what you've got to remember about this map is it's an industry that's all connected and the main import export is the harbor so it's inevitable that all the you know the final pro the final products if you like are going to be exported by the harbor but the harbor is really challenging to get in and out of so it's not all bad other challenges are things like the sawmill down here um, the coal mine up there the military base can be fun because that spiral is an absolute nightmare if you've got the wrong load. Uh, also, east out the harbour town is a particular challenge for the DE2 if you ever fancy that. Right, we're going to have to get some sand down and get it working again. It does require patience to operate the DE2. The DE6 will blast up here. It never pretty much never overheats the DE6. If you want to haul something heavier out of the harbour before you get the DE6, you're either looking at double shunting DE2s or you're looking at the steam. And certainly for new players, I wouldn't go anywhere near steam. It is another level of complexity that you could do without while you're learning the game. Right, 0.5 gradients, so, you know, that's, that's pretty decent. 
we should be able to back off slightly and hopefully not need the sand. Sand doesn't cost a lot of money, but as you can see, we've already burned through over a quarter of it, pretty much a third of our sand. And until you've got to the top of this hill, you may need more of it. And once you run out, you're out. And you'll never hill start without that sand with this kind of weight. So if you do have to stop, or if you have to stop, you know, to cool the engine, we're facing a hill start. This is the struggle for a DE2, this kind of weight. A 320 is, um, is always going to be fun. So C2I, while we're just cruising up here, C2I on the map, there's C. 2i, remember we'll be coming in from the east side, so 2i is going to be, as we're reversing in, we want to go left one track, make the drop. So not too difficult, but, you know, because we've got the remote, what we can actually do is jump out the cab and set all of these points up while we're still operating the train remotely. And that is the power of the remote control. Okay, just give it a little cool. Yeah, I've got plenty of time in this job, so... But, you know, having, having the old clock there will give you an idea. But sometimes you need to sacrifice, like, 10 kilometers an hour of speed just to bring the temperatures back under control. Don't be thinking you're going to come up here in a D2 with this much weight and have a lot of speed. You're not. Patience is the key. The important thing is that you make it up here efficiently and get your bonus. If that means just cruising like this at 20, then that's what it means. Okay, so looking at our map, we're about to make that sharp left turn, which I know from experience is a 40 limit, and then keep left through the T, but, you know, we're never going to hit 40 up a hill, so it's fine. Now, once we make it uh, through this section, this is more or less kind of higher speed. You know, we can, we can run up here. Uh, we're looking at a 60 left, uh, sorry, a 60 right turn through here, down slope, keep the speed under control for a 50 left turn, and then we're more or less straight through the farm at speed, straight through here at speed. As we get to this bend here, we've got a drop down to about 30 through that turn. That there doesn't look like a 30 turn, but it is. Got to be very careful through this section. And then we're into the, um, the aspect of, you know, as if we're heading out and then reversing back in. That's the goal. But you notice like this, we're doing 20 and the temperature's under control. We'll pick it up shortly and deal with some of the uh, the other issues on our journey. Now once you um, once you break out of that triangle there, it's, it very quickly levels off. Cool your engine down, then bring up your speed to about 60 in the, in the DE2, and then you can just coast it. it is, most of this is relatively flat along here. Just don't, if you get over 60, just make sure that you've got it back under control when you take this right turn and be aware that we're then going to be going downhill and then it's about controlling the descent um, with, with your brakes. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, independent brake might work if it's not too heavy. Uh, otherwise, you might have to put the train brake on a little bit uh, you know, for a short period uh, just to shave off the speed and keep it under control. Not so bad with Dero Valley Overhauled, but with Simulator, uh, the next version that's coming, it will include, it will model things like brake fade and overheating, so uh, you, you are going to have to be more skilled on the brakes in the next version. But in this one, you know, you can indie brake all day down here and it won't overheat. Speed is under control. In fact, it's uh, coming down slightly, a bit too much, so I'm just going to throttle up. I want to keep the pace. We have about 35 minutes left. 36, 37 minutes. Making good time. It's all downhill from here, quite literally. So I see no reason why we uh, will not make it on time. There you go. Minus 0 0.9 gradient. That is uh, getting on for 1% going downhill. And you'll see it reflecting in our speed, which has already started to, uh, to build up. So 50 is the number. There's the farm uh, over there. There's the, uh, the oil well. Oil well central, you see it? There are two oil wells on the map. This one's oil well central, oil well north is there. So we're going to be going left and we're going to be going all the way straight through that. It was a very fast run. 
So we want to start thinking about just keeping your speed under control. Don't let it run away with you. As soon as you break out of this valley, that turn will be on you. You won't have time to slow down at that point. Right, so I'm just going to put in one notch of full brake. Full train brake there. And then remove it. See what that does. Not a lot, so we'll put two notches in. Oh, we'll keep two notches on just for the second. Get ready with this in case it's not right. There you go. I'm going to be going left. You can see our speed. 50 left, 60 straight on. Just be wary of that. But the speed's under control with two notches of train brake. Minus 3.3 gradient. This, this curve, by the way, minus 3.3... It's a curve and a drop. So it's not so bad when you come in this way, but you try coming the other way. When If you come this way, you go into the harbour, you want to build your speed up just as you make this turn because you lose a lot of speed through that bend. It's a climbing turn. It's awful. Okay, went through that a little bit too quick. All right, brakes are off completely. Now, don't be fooled by this next signal coming up. It's, it's a little bit deceiving, this one, because the uh, you might think you want to go that way. You don't. You want to keep left and go through the farm. Now, it said 50 limit if you're going left. We're not going left. We're going right. It's, it's, it's a weird junction, that one. The very first time I came through the farm, I went down there and hit a dead end. <laughs> if you're going straight through, this is the way you want to go. And be sure these two points are set correctly to, if you want to go straight through. This track here will always be empty. Uh, these are the, are the sidings and the input-output lines, but this track will always be empty. As long as your points are set correctly, it's just a cruise. Uh, one other technique is if you want to get ahead, you know, we could jump out of here with the F teleport key, and we can kind of run down here, make sure that these next set of points are okay so you know a right and then sorry a left and then a right will keep us straight through here like that that's what you're looking for keeping left there keeping right there straight through you can monitor the train but you can see it's sort of flickering if you at the bottom it says signal boost or signals um signal strength i should say and you can see that this signal strength is going up as the train approaches if you get beyond this, it, uh, it will start to flicker, and eventually you'll just hear a static noise, and that's the sign that you're out of range. There we go. Right, so the next major thing to look for is this turn I told you about, this sharp turn here. Um, as you come alongside the water, you want to be slowing down to 30 as, you, as you're coming alongside the water there, because that turn will happen fairly quickly. So I will show you that because it's quite important. But, you know, one thing you can do is, you know, if you want to, you stand out here, use the remote, charge it up. Just watch that battery level. You don't want it to get to zero. Otherwise, the remote won't work. So you can take the opportunity like this just to um, get it on charge. This is the water here. Gets a bit noisy out there, doesn't it? Okay, right. So we're alongside the water now and we will be making a right turn there so I'm going to get the speed under control a couple of notches of train brake bring it right down release the brake remember there's a massive delay on the brake pipe getting the pressure back up so you continue to lose speed so once you get used to that you can judge it a little bit and you see this sign you think oh 60 that's absolutely fine no, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not fine. If you need to throttle up just to maintain your speed, it's better to overbrake than underbrake. Okay. And lo and behold, there's your right turn, there's your 30 sign. Yeah, so if you came round that corner at 60, by the time you notice that sign, disaster, basically. Now, going back to the map, we know that we're coming in from the east. We've got to keep right, right, and then out, and then we want to reverse right, 
right, keeping right, keeping right into the first lane on the left as we go in. We'll get this set up as we drive through it. Do be very careful with this bend. I have literally in my stream, I have had a carriage derail at 31 point something miles per hour, kilometers per hour coming through here. 31.7 and the speed limit was 30. Normally you can get away with like five to 10. Most of the cars were fine. One car derailed at 31.7, absolutely brutal. So we'll just keep a little bit of tension down the line there. And then once the back is through, which it is, we should be able to bring up the speed. Time check, 30 minutes or so. One of the other cool things when you've got the remote, you can do this kind of thing. You can literally stand on top of the train. You know, if you like it, I find this quite useful and fun, actually. You know, you can sort of move to the back of the train, have a lot of fun with it, you know. It's not realistic, but pff, it's a game. So we're keeping right all the way through here. Again, if you want to, what we could do is run ahead, keep right, and then we should be set on right anyway. There you go. So we're going to keep right through the yard here. 50 limit, so just make sure you're not doing any more than 50. Just try and keep the speed up. And then this turn here, that needs to be right. That will start to take us out towards the machine factory. Notice the 30 limit here, though, because we're making a right turn. So you need to be down to 30 by this bit. Level ground, that's what that sign is. This is why I like, but this is why I think you should get the remote control nice and early, because of this because it is incredibly useful. Learning these yards is quite difficult. You know, I've got quite a lot of experience in them, but it's one thing seeing the layout on the map, and it's quite another seeing the layout when you get down on the ground like this. Um, there's no substitute for experience. And having the remote lets you do this. It lets you get ahead of the train, get down here, have a look around, and make adjustments to the train remotely before you don't have any time to do it. And uh, that's why I think, for a, particularly for new players, get this before you get things like concurrent license, um, you know, the, the uh, logistics license. All those things are very useful, but this thing is a godsend. Okay, so we want to stop the train because that is past where we want to be. Right, so now we'll put the reverser into reverse. And while that train's doing its thing, we've got to keep right. So we'll follow the track through now. We can keep our eye on the train, look. Keep right. Come down here. Keep right again. And then keep left to go on this bit. And we should be into C... Where are we going? Into C2I. There's C2I. And that one. See? And what, you know, we've done all of that while we're operating the train and bringing it back towards where we want it to go. It's such a time saver. I can't say it enough, guys. It really is. Now, the other thing I'll show you while we're stood on the back of here, just cruising backwards, I'll kill that speed, is when you decouple, you see this here? You can use this to decouple. And the way you do it is by counting how many cars you want to decouple. Minus one means the back of the train, number slot number one. So if you like the, the connection one at the back of the train. Minus two would mean behind the train, not the first one, which is the trains, but the next one. So if you did minus two, it would drop one car off the back. I hope that makes sense. Minus, it, it makes sense once you get used to it, but basically that is minus one. That's the back of the train. Minus two would be here, yeah? Similarly, if you can spin it into plus, plus one is the front of the train. Now, bear in mind, it depends which way the train is facing. We're reversing, so this is the back of the train. So this is minus one. That is the setting I want it on when I press uncouple. It doesn't matter for couple. It will couple everything that's in range. But uncouple will specifically couple that connection there. Start shaving a bit of speed off. And again, this thing makes coupling and uncoupling easy, which is why if you want to do shunting, you want to get one of these as quickly as possible. Right, we'll get all the brakes on.
but I would recommend that you always check anyway when you do this. Uncouple. There you go. And then finally, we'll jump into here. Turn the engine off. That's that done. We don't want it racking any more bills. And then you have to find the station, which I happen to know where it is. It's here. And we'll hand this in. And 31 minutes to do a 55 minute job. 18 grand base pay. We actually got paid almost 27,000 because we got our bonus. Now, if you look at our fees, we can see we've racked up a bill on that train for 3,000, on that loco for 4,796, and then this one that we just drove, 7,400. If you want to, you can carry on doing this all the way up to the point where you just want to buy a license. I'm going to clear this out now because I want to buy a license for the next video. So we're going to go uh, down to here, say we'll clear it. It'll say insurance only needs you to pay 3100 to clear all the fees. But if you want to, if you're playing this through yourself, absolutely do more shunting and jobs with different locomotives before you pay this off. Maximize the benefit. There you go. So we've still got the same copay, but now we have... 37,000 in our wallet and we bought 25 grand remote control and we bought a five grand pocket watch. In the next video, what we'll do is decide what license to go for next and uh, maybe do an interesting job. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, guys. I uh, hope you're enjoying Derail Valley. I should have something fairly exciting coming soon on the Derail Valley front, but more about that in the future. Take it easy, guys. Happy training.